For this tutorial, the NURBS Lathe avatar will be used as the example avatar, which you can download from the link below. It is very important to tick the Seamless Nodes Auto In field if it is not already ticked, otherwise Seamless will likely crash when importing objects unless you know what you're doing. The Auto In field allows indices for joining vertices to be automatically recalculated when certain tasks are performed without slowing down editing. Delete all the build nodes that generate the geometry we no longer want. Deleting each lathe node one at a time doesn't take long for this example, but you can select multiple nodes for deletion by holding down shift while using the arrow down key. To import our trousers, right click on the seamless node and select import build nodes. Because our trousers contain build nodes that reference a part node named pelvis, we must be sure our avatar has a part node named pelvis2 and with upper and lower case characters matching. If matching names are not found, the importation will fail. Scale the trousers using the stretch squash feature. It is often easier to use the control point selection panel instead of directly using the mouse when moving objects like this as we don't want to accidentally drag the object to the right or left. To open the panel, press control T. If the ends of the trousers go into the shoes a little, they can be easily modified to make them look like they're draping over the shoes. It's good to have the control points aligned with the skeleton's pivot points where possible, so let's move some of the leg rings up a little to align one of the rings with the knees. We'll come back to modifying the trousers later, but now let's move on with importing the jacket. Don't forget, for every part node referenced in the importation file, a part node with an identical name must exist in the file we are importing into. In this case, our reference part is named Thorax. So after importing our jacket, the jacket's build nodes are referencing this part in our avatar skeleton. To get the trousers control cage out of the way, hide the cages by double clicking on the trousers patch nodes. Stretch the arm in one dimension so that it reaches the avatar's hand. We want to drag the arm forward from a bird's eye view, but it's easier to select the control points we want to drag forward while looking front on. We want the jacket overlapping the trousers, but it is now apparent the trousers need to be squashed in too. We can continue to overlap the jacket at this stage because we can later squash both the jacket and the trousers in together. OK, now unhide the trousers control cage. Select control points from both the trousers and the jacket and squash them both.
Drag down some of the thorax's control points so that there are points aligned with the thorax's pivot points. And drag down some of the shoulder's points too while we're at it. Now let's tidy up some of the damage done to the shoulders. I notice the neck needs to be tugged out a little at the back. If we try animating it now, this is what we see. This is because the trousers and the jacket are owned by single parts. There are a number of different options available to us to animate the trousers and jacket correctly. For making movies, I recommend using NURBS control point animation. Not only is this method easy, it gets high quality results. See my video, Beginner's NURBS control point animation. Seamless 3D.